Today I'm in the Lake District which is in northwest England and I'm going to go for a walk up to the summit trig point on the, uh, <laughs> the hill that you can see behind me. As you can see the visibility lower down is not too bad. It's about two or three hundred meters visibility. Um, higher up it looks as if it's going to be more interesting. Now looking at the map you can see that there's a major footpath um, all the way at the summit on the northwest side of the hill but I'm on the opposite side so from here I'm going to have to navigate. This area has some quite complex terrain so in some sections of the walk just using intermediate level navigation techniques it, it's not going to work so this type of area I'm going to need some advanced navigation techniques. That said, you have to ask, what is the difference between intermediate and advanced navigation? A lot of this, I would say, is to do with the terrain and the weather conditions that you're, you know, you're walking into. You know, if it's complex or dangerous terrain, then you're going to have to up your game. And don't forget that some terrain is made more complex and dangerous by the weather conditions and visibility or lack of it. So I would say there are two main differences between intermediate and advanced navigation and this is just my opinion so it may be wrong. Firstly I would guess that most intermediate navigators or people with an intermediate level skill they, they would be able to follow this route that I'm going to do today you know and they could manage but the difference is that an advanced navigator would have absolutely no problems following the route and this all comes down to something which nowadays some people don't like the sound of. You need practice and you need experience. Regular practice just means that the skills that you've got are maintained and experience using those skills will allow you to use them in all weather conditions, any type of terrain and in any visibility. The other difference between intermediate and, and advanced, this can be described in one very simple word, which is precision. Which in a, in a navigation sense, this isn't just following a bearing in a straight line. I mean, that is important, but do you also know how, you've, how far along you've walked on your bearing? You know, can you easily select the most appropriate strategy from the information on your map? You know, can you do this in any conditions and in, in any visibility? You know, this is what precision means. I'm at the corner of, of this wall that you can see on the map. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the contour line until it changes direction. So I'm going to head off on approximately 225. I said precision, didn't I? I'm going to set off on exactly 225. And when the contour line changes to 325, so basically that's, it's going to go southwest and then it will change to northwest. It's only 130 meters, but the fog is coming down very quickly. Now, 130 meters, and once again, I know I said precision, I'll call it two minutes instead of what's that, one minute 57 seconds. So I'll just follow the contour line for a couple of minutes to the start of the small spur. And if I don't arrive at the change in terrain direction, I'll have another look at my map. Yeah, this is where the contour line changes direction. So don't be put off by the word advanced. Everyone who can read a map could have done what I've just done. The advanced part of that, which takes it up a step, is being able to look at a map and visualize this particular spur with a north, north aspect. You know, the ability to use feature recognition, um, some countries call it terrain association. This is one of the most useful skills that you can have when you're out in the hills. Anyway, from here, I'm just going to head basically due south for 220 meters to the end of the flat section uh, which is just below the crags that are shown on the map here. Now it should take about four and a half minutes but that's what's that that's 318 for the distance and I'm going to go up 10 meters so I'll add another minute for the rise so you know we'll call it four and a half minutes. I'll use the crags to tell me if I've gone too far you know that is a brilliant catching feature. Walking into a cliff <laughs> that will tell you that you've gone too far. Uh, the reason I'm going this way by the way is that 
I've got across a stream and the higher up the stream you get normally it's uh it's, it's easier and smaller to, you know it's easier to get over and also as you can see from the map contours lower down there are some very pronounced v shapes in the contour line just next to the stream this tells me that it's a very it's small but it's steep so the banks down to the stream are you know quite steep and i really in this area i really don't want to slip and fall into a stream but above this where I'm heading to at the end of the flat bit, um, there are no V shapes on the contour line, so it'll be flatter. Now the map tells me that it's a little bit marshy, but that's okay. You know my boots are waterproof, so <laughs> I'll have a look. You know I'll have a look at it when I arrive. Just below it's just below the confluence of two streams. Now it may be just an idea to walk up and go over both streams, or to try and get across, you know, when they've joined the confluence. Um, I'll go up there and uh, if the stream is too wide, then I'll, I'll make another plan. Okay, I'll carry on. The weather is getting worse <laughs> or more interesting, depending on your, is a glass half full? Who knows? Anyway, from here, I'm going to go downhill, according to the map. And I'm actually going to go virtually due west, which is what, 270? And after the stream, it, it's only 40 meters to the top of the ring, but this is where being able to interpret contour lines is really important because it's only 40 meters from the stream to the top of the ring. But I'm going to rise 30 meters. I'm going to go over three contour lines. This means it's a short but very steep climb, just under 40, 40 degrees, which is what is 75%. So uh, you need to watch where you're going and you need to be expecting it. So it's going to be quite hard, wo hard walking because looking at the map, it, it shows me that between here and the stream, there's bracken or rough grassland. And then after the stream, it changes to scrub, which is just land covered by small bushes and long grass. So it's, it's not easy to walk. In fact, I can actually see the ring contour behind. <laughs> I need to get up to there. So uh, <laughs> hopefully I'll see you at the top. I think this is the ring contour that I was heading to, but just to make sure, I'm going to do a quick resection. So I think I'm at this ring contour here, but there's an awful lot of stuff, <laughs> for want of a better expression. There's an awful lot of things around this area. So I just need to confirm that I'm actually at where I think I am. Now I can still see the corner of the wall from where I'm stood. So that's the corner of the wall there, and I think I'm here. So I'm going to use the parallax line just to make sure that I'm actually on the correct line. So as you can see, the corner of the wall, there's the ring contour, and the, the orienting arrow is pointing straight up the map. There is no declination you know, to speak of in this area. So as you can see, so I am actually on this line. But the problem is, obviously, I could be anywhere along, if I could be anywhere along this line. And I want to confirm that I'm actually here. I can also see the corner of this fence here from this direction and I took a bearing off it and it was 114 so I'll set my compass at 110, 114. So there's the corner of the fence, I think I'm here using the parallax line again. So there's my point, get it directly over and there's the corner of the fence. Let's rotate it, so there's the corner of the fence. There's the ring contour, and once again, I'm there. So I've done a resection of sorts. Normally resections, what you'd do is you'd take your bearing and then put it onto a map. But what I did is, in this case, I took the bearings from various points. I don't need to draw um, lines on this map because I know that I'm on this line, and I also know that I'm on this line. So I am actually on the ring contour. And if I use the millimeters, from the northings and eastings. Let's have a look. So I use the millimeter scale to, I've forgotten where I am now, I'm there. So once again, use the millimeter scale because it's a lot more exact and I've got 0525. So my grid reference to where I am at the moment is 35570525 and that gives me my, you know, my location to within 10 meters, which, you know, which is normally okay. From here onwards, it's going to be a little, a little bit more interesting. As, as you can see from the map, the ground is covered by 
very large boulders, small crags and cliffs and lots of things that are out to grab you. So this is a possibly dangerous area that I'm going to be walking in. So I'm going to have to plan each leg <coughs> very carefully to make sure that I don't go too close to anything I can, uh, I can drop off, which I don't want to do. I'm going to head to this small tarn. A tarn is a, is a small lake in this part of the world, that's what they call them. So I'll set off underneath these crags that you can see behind me, and then I'm basically going to turn left from here. So from the base of this ring contour, I'm going to go on look, 245 magnetic for 150 meters. So I'll pace that. And I'm going to the, get to the, just where it, the, uh, the end of those crags, where they turn sharp right and then I'm heading to the west of this ring contour okay now this ring contour looks to be completely surrounded by crags except on the on the south side which is very wet and marshy so I actually don't want to go there after that 150 meters I should actually be able to see the tarn um, and if not I'll just go due south until I get to it you know quite simple um, in this situation if it was foggy or at night um, I could tell how, you know, if I was too far or too east of, sorry, too west or too east of my track because I'd start to walk uphill. That would be my catching feature. So as you can see on the map, the line that I'm going to take is virtually flat and there is a rise on the left and right. So that would be my catching feature. So I'll set off here and um, I'll meet you at the town. Ah, now... <laughs> This is quite a problem, it, well it's a problem in this area and I assume in other areas. As you can see on the map, the, the tarn is a blue feature on the map with very clearly defined edges. But if you look in front of me, this is the tarn and it's basically, it's basically overgrown. So it's very difficult to see. I know I'm in the right place, but the feature that's marked on the map is not that easy to see. So from here at the overgrown tarn, I think I'll, I'm going to go to this next tarn that's uh, further up. I'm going to walk very loosely on a bearing of somewhere between, what's that, 275 to 285. I don't think it'll be possible to follow an exact bearing just because of the terrain. Um, there's lots of small crags, large boulders, there's drops all over the place. So I'm gonna have to just walk in a general direction. I'll show you what I mean. I've just turned the camera around so you can see what I'm talking about. If you look on the map, just to the, the left or the, the west of the tarn, there is a very small, you know, almost nothing, thin, thin line. That crag there is that thin line on the map. If you're walking around here in heavy fog or at night time, or you really don't want to be walking along the top of that. That is, uh, it's not that far, it's a 10 meter drop, but you know, it's, uh, it, it wouldn't be a good thing to happen. Having said that, if you look at this crag, this crag here behind me on the, on the left as I'm looking at it, that's not actually shown on the map. That one is, that one isn't. So in this type of area, you do need to plan your route carefully, look at the map and visualize the terrain and know the terrain type that you're walking over. Okay, it's really important. Now, from here, I'm going, it's enough of that waffle. <laughs> so from here, I'm going to go from the tarn where I am up to this next tarn here that I'll indicate on the map. Now, this one here is on the, what's that? That's on the three, it's, it's on the 300 contour and I'm on the 240 contour at the moment. And it's only using my millimeter. If you, at this level, try and use the millimeter scale on your compass rather than the Roma. It's just more accurate. I've got, 460 meters. So if I was to walk in a straight line, it's a big if by the way, if I was to go in a directly a, a straight line, you're looking at, what's that, 460, that's six minutes, 54 seconds. We'll, we'll call it seven minutes. Um, plus we're going up six contours, 10 meters a time. So we'll add another six minutes. You've got 13 minutes if I was to go from here at the tarn, straight across the, the hills to the next one. But Looking, looking at the terrain, it's just not going to happen. You know, there's no chance of going in a straight line. So to keep me, to keep me going in sort of the right direction, I'm going to use the slope aspect. Now, on the map, as you can see, the slope aspect that I'll be traversing, it's roughly between 40 and 60 degrees. So, by the way, I did a, um, 
I did a video on slope aspect. Um, I'll, I'll put the I'll put the link in the description box. So I'm going to use a slope aspect to uh, keep me on the uh, on the right track. And if it all goes wrong, I'll just walk up to the stream um, straight north, and then I'll handrail the stream, and that will get me to the tarn. But you know, let's give it a go. So rucksack time, and uh, off we go. Let's carry on. So it appears that something's gone wrong. I'm lost again. <laughs> Nothing unusual about that. So I said I was going to walk on, the, on a bearing up towards the tarn and the slope aspect was going to be between 40 and 60, you know, but uh, this slope aspect is 110. In like fact, this whole area, the mountains are pointing in the wrong direction. So, <laughs> well, the mountains are in the right direction. I'm on the wrong bit of mountain. Now, I've only walked for about five minutes, so I can only have come, I don't know, three to four hundred metres. And I know exactly where I started from, so this is a good thing, because I can only be in a circle around the tarn. But I know which direction I set off on, so I know that I'm in this area here somewhere. So I, you know, the ground aspect is 110, and in this area there is only one place where the ground aspect is, uh, the slope aspect, is 110. So I stopped being lost and I found myself. Um, this recognizing an error very quickly is quite important because if you don't, it can lead into uh, some serious situations that you don't want to get into. Now, looking at the map, I know where I am and I really don't want to go up into all this stuff. That's a good word, stuff, you know, <laughs> lots of messy things on the, on the map. So I don't want to go due west because, you know, small cliffs and crags and all the rest of it. The best option is literally to very carefully from here walk due south and go back to the stream and then handrail that up to the tarn. The problem is I must have come over the stream in the first place because it's between where I am and the tarn, which means that the stream, like the first tarn, was, uh, it's, been, it's been overgrown. So I'm literally, I'm not going to have to look out for the stream, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to look out, look out for the uh, the contours that are around the stream, and when I get to that, I'll know that's where the stream should be. Maybe I can see it, you don't know. And from there, I'm going to hand rail up. So from being lost, I know where I am, and I know where I'm going. So this tarn is a lot more defined. It's a little bit more like it shows on the map. As you can see, it's, only, it's not really overgrown. Now, from here, it's only, well, I've got 200 meters up to the trig from here. And we're on the 300 contour line now. The trig is at 335. So let's have a look. It's just over six minutes if you include the, include the rise. But the map is showing me that it's um, scrub. So the, the terrain may be a little bit more difficult. So it may take slightly more than six minutes. Um, we'll carry on. So we made it all the way to the trig point and now we're going to have to navigate back down again. All the way to the car park and on the way down, it's always a good idea for a, have a sandwich and a cup of coffee. Sandwiches today, prosciutto cotto, which is a, a thin Italian ham with cream cheese and sliced grapes. I mean, come on, just because you're up a mountain, there's no reason to have naff sandwiches. <laughs> anyway, don't forget that today, I've been making this video in reasonable conditions in daylight because it's a demo video, so viewers need to be able to see what's going on. But advanced navigation, you should be able to do this in all weather conditions and in all visibility, all different types of visibility, so bear that in mind. Now, if you can navigate to a reasonable standard, then you will have almost certainly said, thought to yourself, you know, the route I did today wasn't that difficult. And it wasn't. And you can't understand why I would call that advanced navigation. Watch the video again and try and pick up on what we've actually done today. To start off with, we navigated just using contours. I mean, that is a big step up from the intermediate level. On each leg of the route, we knew the five Ds. You know, direction, distance, duration, description, and destination for each leg. We always knew the five Ds for where we were going. If you're not sure what the five Ds are, I did a video describing them. I'll put the link in the description box. Once we got to the first ring contour, if you remember, we used the resection 
to confirm our location. Another big step up from intermediate level. All the way along the route, we could tell from the information on our map what the terrain would be like that we, you know, we were setting off into. We also knew the height changes and the different types of ground cover, and etc, etc. When we got lost on the way to the second town, we recognised the error very quickly as we were, we were navigate, use, navigating using slope aspect. Another big step up from the intermediate level. We also used slope aspect to find our way back to the uh, handrail and from that handrail we got up to the second time. So at all times and every time we looked at the map we knew precisely where we were. And all this was only possible because we practiced these skills and strategies many, many times. So we had the experience to be precise. If you can do everything I've done today, then congratulations, you can call yourself an advanced navigator. Thanks for watching.